So we have business owners. They want to start a business. We're excited. I'm one of them. And we don't know anything about law. Right. And we know that there are some legal things that we probably need to know starting a business. What would you tell maybe a solopreneur that had a surface business, perhaps a consulting practice, um, what they might need to think about from a legal perspective? Really, they have to look at it in terms of liability. Mm -hmm. So there's several criteria, but for example, what are your points where trouble could come? Mm -hmm. If it's a product, should you have products liability insurance? Don't you need terms and conditions? I think people need to look at their business and look at their assumptions. Mm -hmm. If they have assumptions about, I'm a service provider, I can't guarantee a result, that needs to be in your terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it needs to be in your engagement letter. Everyone mm -hmm. should have an initial engagement letter. A separate issue is what the structure of your business should look like mm -hmm. and how you want it to grow. Do you want this to be a lifestyle business? Do you want this to grow through employment of lots of people? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a different issue, but it, you need to know about the structure. Should it remain a sole proprietorship? Do you have to trademark the name? Should you incorporate the business and why? Should it be an S Corp, a C Corp? Should you incorporate in California or elsewhere? And then you need to look at the documents that you need in the business. Where's the contract? Where's the disclaimer? What should you have on your invoice? Shouldn't you have uh, interest if it goes too long? Shouldn't you have an attorney fee clause if you have to sue on it? Those are the types of things I look for. So, because this is interesting to me, tell me about business structure. How would someone decide what kind of business structure they would want? Let's say, um, you know, most of the people that you know that are out there networking, what kinds of businesses, how, would, how might they structure them? What are the different options and what might be some of the decision criteria that they would use? Two criteria always. One is the tax aspect and one is liability. Okay. As an attorney, I'm concerned only with liability. Mm -hmm. I like LLCs, S-Corps, C-Corps, because you have limitation of liability. And mm -hmm. What that means is your personal assets are not going to be liable for any business debts. Mm -hmm. You need to keep them totally separate. It's as though they're two separate buildings. Mm -hmm. So your personal assets should be segregated. You shouldn't be using one credit card for both the business and personal. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be using one checking account. A DBA doesn't do that for you. And a partnership leaves you open to not only your liabilities, but your partner's liabilities. Mm -hmm. So I stay away from those. The difference between those three, I leave up to a CPA to make a tax decision, mm -hmm. which is ben more beneficial tax-wise. Mm -hmm. So that's outside of my purview. Okay. So those are the different options, though, kind of solopreneur, partnership, and then you say I have, like you said, S-Corp, C-Corp, mm -hmm. various different entities. Okay, great. When you say a solopreneur, you can be incorporated or have an LLC form with one person, mm -hmm. and that gives you that limitation of liability. Without those, those structures, one of those three, LLC, mm -hmm. which is limited liability company, uh, corporation, you're not going to have that limitation of liability. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you don't need it. Maybe you can protect yourself with insurance. Mm -hmm. But in business, that's unlikely. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome.